There's a really quick way to create uh, applique letters from any font you choose in version 9. Um, well, there's a quick way to um, create appliques in version 9 full stop. But with letters, there are a few things you need to consider. First of all, um, the, so the shape of the letter. It needs to be a nice, solid, blocky letter. And the size is a consideration as well. Uh, appliques don't work for very small lettering, obviously. Um, your border would be too wide for the letter. But these nice block letters, if you want to create a nice big letter or even a number, um, you can do that quite easily. Uh, I've got these at 75 millimeters high. So this would be a feature letter on a quilt block or on uh, as a monogram type applique on a bag or something like that. Now I'm going to start, there are some problems you can come across with this method and so I'm going to show you how to do the letter A first which is really easy and then we'll progress on to the letters that are a little bit more difficult. So this letter A is the Arial Black font. So if I right click on here and go to the object properties, we can see Arial Black. It's a true type font. It's not a, an embroidery font. But of course, when you choose true type fonts in your software and type in your letters up here and go OK, the software will do its best guess of, of how to digitize that as a lettering object. OK, so we'll just go OK because I've already done it. So here we are um, now. For an applique, we want a nice border around the letter and we want a border around the hole in the middle. Now, a lettering object in itself will not con uh, um, convert immediately to an applique. So the quick applique tool for converting objects into applique is found under the applique in the applique toolbox I should say and there's an, ob uh, an option here to convert to applique so I've selected that letter A let's make it red so that it's different to all the other letter letters I've got in the color film here so here's my red letter A and let's go convert to applique and if I go to individual objects you'll see nothing's happened it hasn't converted to an applique go back to color blocks what you need to do is break it apart first. So we're in our lettering and monogramming and so I'll go back to that toolbox. We haven't got any way of breaking it apart in the lettering toolbox so we need to go to edit. The edit toolbox and we need to select the object of course so I've got my select tool and it selects the last object I was dealing with which was this letter A so now I can break that apart and now when I go to individual objects in my color film I've got three objects making up the letter A now if I was to outline this Sorry, if I was to convert this to applique now, so let's select that letter A and convert to applique. So we need to go to the applique toolbox and click on convert to applique. It's going to convert the object as it was. So I've got three objects converting to applique and I only want one. So here's where I can use the world tool to create one single applique um, okay so we'll undo that and we'll select our A again all three objects in the A and we will go to our edit toolbox and we have our world option here we can click on that and now I've got a single object with one stitch angle in satin stitch because it was a satin stitch letter so it's kept the satin stitch as you can see in the color film, it is one single object. If I go back to color blocks, there it is in color blocks. But if I go to single object, individual objects, it's a single object. So now when I select that and go to my applique toolbox and click on convert to applique, it converts it conveniently to an applique. If I click on here for individual objects, again, 
sorry, color blocks, it will come up with the three colors for the um, applique. So I've got a placement line, a tech down line, and the cover stitch. And those are the defaults. You can change those defaults before you create your letter or after you create your letter. Um, so you can just select the letter, the applique, and right click on your object uh, and get your object properties up and your applique object properties will come up here so if you want to change um, the placement if you don't want a placement line you can deselect that if you want a cutting line you can select that um, your tack down you can choose whether you want single blank zigzag or or box zigzag so you've got lots of tack down options and spacings and widths and so on. So you've got all your options here. If you want to choose an applique fabric, you can choose or you can choose a color. Um, so let's put in a yellow inside here and go OK. And machine functions, color changes and stops and all sorts of things that we can look at in another video. So I'm just going to go OK there. I can't see any fabric in here because I haven't got my show fabric icon highlighted here. So now I have, um, and there's my yellow color in there. Now that was all well and good for that letter A, but it doesn't always work. So if we look here at this letter B, I'm going to select it and I'm going to right click and go to the object properties. And I can see here that I've used the rounded block font. Um, which is an embroidery font. We can tell by the embroidery zigzag here. So we'll go OK. Now, if I look really closely, it's not really showing. Do I show outlines? Take the outlines off. No, I can't see that. I'll have to go to the reshape tool to show you that this is actually one object. Now, well, it's still a lettering object. Let's um, break that one apart. Edit break apart and you can see here that this is one object uh, the main part is down here at the the straight part of the letter B then the top part of the letter B curves right around here and overlaps again here and the bottom part of the letter B curves around here and overlaps into here which can be a bit problematic so let's see what it does with the applique, convert to applique. So I'm going to select it again. And remember we broke apart and welded the letter A, but we can't weld the letter B because it's already only one object. So anyway, we've broken it apart. So let's, we haven't got weld option available. Um, let's see what we get when we go to convert to applique. So we've got it selected and we can go convert to applique. And you can see here that it's not very pretty. We've got this applique overlapping around here and overlapping here. It's just one object um, and the applique stitch has gone right round. So I'm going to undo that. So when you come across a letter like this, you do need to do a little bit more work, but it's not too much. So I'm going to actually undo it one more time so that this letter is back as a lettering object. So we'll undo it one more time. And now it's a lettering object. I can make sure of that by going to the reshape tool and I've got my lettering editing tools, not the nodes and angles. So I've got a lettering object back here. So you would type your letter in at the size you want and in the font you want and then select it. And this time we're going to use our outlines tool. So we'll go edit outlines and offsets and we're going to choose a single outline and I'm going to choose a, a contrast color so that you can see what happens. And I want this center option here, which is common outlines, and just go OK. And because I chose common outlines, I've got a nice clean outline of the outside of the B, and I've got a nice clean running stitch outline of the holes in the B. So I can select those red objects and drag them off. So notice I 
clicked down here because if I click anywhere in on the on the blue part it will um, take the blue part instead so I've, I wanted the red part now I'm going to click off and we'll zoom into this B okay so what we can do now is select this outer line so we need to make sure we've only got that selected so let's just go into individual objects and yes I've just got that outer line selected I'm going to fill that with a satin stitch you could fill it with anything you like to be honest but I need to get these holes in here so we just add holes and once you click on the add holes you just digitize around the hole using right clicks to go around the curves and left clicks to go on the straight lines and we that's a straight line going straight down now so if I hit enter that will close that hole for me with a straight line and I'll do this one here very quickly and so that's got that hole I don't need any more holes so I just need to hit enter again and my holes are there so now I've got a single satin stitch object I can left uh, select that so get my select tool I'll drag that off and it's a single object I can now go into my applique toolbox and convert that to applique so wasn't that easy really quick obviously it's quicker when you've got a letter that will work here's another letter that will work over here this is let me see select it right click object properties this is the arm wrestler font you may or may not have this um, your true type fonts will just show the true type fonts that you have installed on your computer so um, if you've downloaded other fonts you'll have more if you haven't you'll just have the ones that came with your Corel or any other program that comes with fonts built in okay so we've got this one this one is made up of separate objects I will just go break that apart Oh, I keep right clicking on things wanting to break them apart but that doesn't work but we've got in the applique tool we've got the break apart as well now so it's quick to get that there and as you can see here I've got the parts here of the letter B now they're not pretty I wouldn't stitch this as a letter um, even at normal size um, I would do quite a bit of work if I wanted that particular font to make it stitch much nicer than this but it will work very quickly and easily for an applique so I've got those parts I need to select them and weld them so that's in the edit toolbox weld now I've got my letter I can go to the applique toolbox and convert to applique here's another one and if I right click on that what have we got here this is the Arial Black B so that's the same font family as the letter A and the letter A was very quick to do but the letter B this letter B is not going to be so quick I'm going to have to use the same process as I did with the letter B over here simply because of the way it's digitized so if I go break that apart and go to the reshape tool I can show you that this is one object that overlaps so welding will not work you need separate objects to weld so in this case I would do the outline process that I did for the letter B over here so I hope all that makes sense but if you want to create a quick applique for from a font that you even one you download and choose you've got two options if your letter is made up of separate objects you can weld it together and make the applique as quick as that just a couple of clicks if your ob if your letter is made up of one object it's not going to weld together um, an S would work 
Oh, yes, we should just do that. So let's go to this rounded block font and get an S to be absolutely sure so you know, understand what I mean. So we're going to go to lettering up here. Now in version 9, don't forget your lettering's in its own toolbox now. Right click, let's put in the rounded block font. So we need to go up to the embroidery fonts. And go there in alphabetical order. So there's our rounded block font. We've still got our 75 millimeters high. Let's type in the letter S. And go OK. And I'll put it up here. All right, so that's one object, but it doesn't need to be um, outlined or anything because it's one solid object already. It does have turning angles, but that doesn't matter. Select the S. Don't forget to break it apart so that it's no longer a lettering object. And then select it again and applique, convert to applique. So there you go. Now it converted to a blue S because I had blue stitching. It takes on the color of the stitching. So, But you can easily change that color. So if you like this video, you might like some of my project lessons that I have available on my website. They're not very expensive. I'll just show you those now, how to get there. And I'll put a link to my website down below. So here it is here. And so my lessons are under the digitizing lessons find out what's on offer just click on that then there'll be some categories here there's um, three products in the version 9 but a lot of the version 8 courses would be relevant as well for um, you could easily do them in version 9 um, and my zoom meetings and lesson zoom meetings and lesson recordings are also useful they're actually recordings of Zoom meetings I have held in the past and they come with any graphics you need to do the lesson so it's just a matter of watching the recording and doing the lesson. I will be holding another Zoom meeting in the not too distant future um, but in the meantime enjoy my YouTube videos and the other products on my um, website and you might notice the prices are in Australian dollars. Thank you for watching.